Good afternoon, friends and neighbors. This is Professor H back with another networking video. We are talking about OpenFlow and the OpenFlow protocol, and that includes a discussion of controllers and OVS or switches in an SDN topology. So without further ado, part two of the OpenFlow protocol. I suppose it's worth mentioning that the link between the controller and the switch is called the OpenFlow channel. For obvious reasons, we're exchanging OpenFlow messages over that channel. And this is the link that the controller uses to manage the switch. Now, some of the messages come from the switch to tell the controller, hey, this is what's happening on the network. But a lot of them come from the controller to tell the switch what to do and to set up the configuration for the switch. Now, if you remember back to the previous videos, I manually set some stuff on the switch, but a lot of that was really just telling the switch what the links were and where the controller was. Now, last time we talked about the TCP connection between the controller and the switch, and it's a standard TCP connection. A controller can also be used to manage multiple switches, and a switch might even be connected to a backup controller. We are focusing on OpenFlow messages, and right now in the specification, at least in specification 1.3, there are three types defined, controller to switch, asynchronous, and symmetric. And I think this time we're going to talk about uh, controller to switch. There are an awful lot of OpenFlow message types defined, more than your standard protocol. So if you're used to looking at something like ARP or ICMP or IP version 6 and even TCP, uh, there are a couple more message types here and several flags to be, con be concerned with. So this is our little rinky-dink uh, SDN topology. And remember that the link there is between the controller and the switch. And so this is our OpenFlow channel. Now I'd like you to also pay attention to the IP addresses that we're using here because we're going to be taking a look at some packets today. And 1.1 will be our controller and 1.2 will be the OpenFlow switch or OVS. So let's talk a little bit about the controller to switch messages first. As it says here, it's initiated by the controller to directly manage or inspect the state of the switch. And we'll see how that works here in a second. Sometimes the switch will respond and it'll say, oh, you just asked me this or you told me to do this. And yep, I did it. Here's the message back. Some of the common messages that we'll see is the features, the modify state, and we'll talk about flow mods here in a little bit, and then asking the, the switch what's happening. Here are a couple of specific packet types. There's a uh, packet out message, and this is really straightforward. It's just the controller telling the switch, hey, listen, when you see one of these, I want you to use this port for it. So there's also a barrier message. And the barrier message is there to, to check and see if there are any dependencies associated with the, uh, the message in question. And we'll talk a little bit about that here in a bit. It also might be simply that the controller says, hey, listen, when you take care of this action, I want to know about it. Uh, a role request is if you have that multi-controller sort of topology. And we're not going to talk about that right now. But as we get farther into SDN and some OpenFlow, we might spend some time with that. Uh, and then there's the configuration messages themselves. Right now, in spec 1.3, there are 10 controller to switch messages defined. Now, we're already familiar with OpenFlow message type 0, which is that hello message. So remember that what happened was we had a TCP connection established between the switch and the controller. And then we had a hello message. And now we're starting into the whole what's happening on the switch and I'm about to tell you what to do sort of thing. This is also part of what we call the handshake. So this is the features request and you can see that this particular message comes from the controller. So this one's from the controller to the switch. And here is the response to that features request. It's a type 6, which I guess sort of makes sense. And if we were to open up each one of these fields, so the, the fun part about this is when we get down to the capabilities, actions, and the port data. And what we're looking at there is the MAC addresses, or are the MAC addresses, 
and then what the controller is allowed to set on the switch. So this will be things like VLAN ID and priority and tags and all, all of that kind of stuff. This is the switch telling the controller, hey, listen, these are the features that are open to you to modify. And here's my information. Now the next up is a set config message. At this point, the controller and the switch could be exchanging parameters that they might want to use for this particular session or for this particular topology. Now this one here happens to be a flow modification. That means something is happening to the flow table on the switch. So again, this one's coming from the controller to the switch. And there are a couple of fun fields that I've pointed out here. One is the command field. Now it's pretty straightforward. There are not a whole lot of things that we do with a flow mod. You're going to add, or you're going to delete, or you're going to change. So this is telling you what the actual command is. And the flags, I just have that one highlighted because this is an indication that each type of message that is sent out can have different flags associated with it. Now you'll also notice that this one happens to have a barrier request inside this, this message. And that is as we know now, either an indication that there's some dependencies or that the controller wants an answer back. And here is our barrier reply. So this is in direct response to the barrier request portion of the flow mod message. Now why is this one here? The controller at this point has just started up. The switch has just been given its config. There's actually not a whole lot going on in the, in the topology at this point. So the previous flow mod message had its matching criteria set up there, and then there was that barrier request. So this barrier reply is just simply the switch saying, hey, listen, I did all the house cleaning that you wanted me to. I'm done. Here is your barrier reply. So the, the packet out message is a message from the controller. We can see here that its source is 1.1 to 1.2. And the whole job of this particular uh, message is to tell the switch what to do with the message or the frame type that the switch is seeing. So just prior to this, I guess I should have showed it to you, but just prior to this, there was a spanning tree message that came in. And so the... The, con the switch told the controller, hey, listen, I just had this happen. And so the controller said, all right, this is what I want you to do with that particular frame. So let's talk just a little bit about the flow mods. There are a couple. So as I said earlier, we can add, we can modify or delete. And that's, that's sort of your general categories there. Now you'll see here that there's also a modify strict and a delete strict. And all that that means is that you have a choice between modification of a flow table entry that's an exact match, strict, or one that matches the general category. So if I say something like match all the packets with an IP address beginning with 224. Well, that certainly doesn't match a particular packet or maybe flow entry. So that certainly wouldn't be a strict match. Now, there is a flow table that is for unicast flows, but there's also group table entries. And so you can also modify, add, or delete entries for the groups. Now, I mentioned the barriers. I think we've already covered that, but just as a reminder, barriers are if we have any message dependencies. So an example of a message dependency might be order. Do these frames or packets have to be processed in a particular sequence. Now the other way to do this is that I want a barrier, I'm going to send a barrier request so that you tell me when you've completed the action, the modification action. Well I just realized that we're out past 10 minutes here and so I think I will draw this one to a close. That'll do it for part two. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like if I helped. We'll have more stuff on OpenFlow coming and some more stuff on general networking later on. So, thanks again, and may your packets always reach their destinations.